Can I start? Yes, yes. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> My name is Eric Hawkinson. Uh, I'm a learning technologist by trade. My passion is kind of in the intersection of education and technology. But where I work in Japan at a university, small university in the northern part of Kyoto Prefecture, uh, we have a School of Regional Management, which has a research track, so I've had some opportunity and also some connections in research tourism to do what I've been doing, creating websites for learning or creating, uh, especially with emerging technologies, for us to help learn uh, new things in, in the realm of higher education and most specifically, kind of focused us down into some uh, tourist applications. And one particular uh, technology I've been working with for the past oh, five, six years now is something called augmented reality. And we have about 12 case studies and represent a research group uh, putting virtual reality, augmented reality, and something called mixed reality to applications in education and tourism. And we have our 12 case studies. And what I'm trying to do with this particular presentation and the paper that goes along with it is take all this stuff and start melding some design principles and some definitions that revolve around the use of this technology in specific tourism contexts. Okay? All right. Does anyone use augmented reality? Anyone know? Do I need to give this? I get this spiel. I give it all the time. But anyone use augmented reality? Anyone use virtual reality? In Japan, we're na we're na yeah, well, in Japan, this would be a sheen moment where it's like, <laughs> um, okay, so there's a whole spectrum uh, involved with this. So right now, we're in the real world conversing right, and our real world perceptions. So you get deep into this research, you ask, start asking yourself, what is real anyway? But um, we're in the real world and we're conversing without any digital contents uh, in between us. But I could also argue that that's not really the case because I'm, my speech and my my presentation is being augmented by some visual contents, digital contents that are displayed behind me. And you start moving and adding more and more digital contents into the real world until you get to the point where the complete environment is simulated in a virtual sense. So virtual reality is taking you and your perceptions and putting them into digital contents, and augmented reality is taking digital contents and putting them in the real world around you. Does that make sense for anyone? Okay. So a good way to think about this is the evolution of media uh, in marketing and education, right? So in a sense, when we started printing things, we started to do time travel with information, right? You put it in a book, and it's trapped there for a long period of time for people to discover later on. And then we could do it uh, with video and audio, with recordings, but that was still trapped in a medium. And then we put it out on the waves to, to be able to be uh, distributed to lots of people very quickly. And something very special happened with the internet where that became two-way communication, this web 2.0 environment. And then the mobile era, now we have all of the previous mediums carried with us at any given time. So we have all of those that came before it inside of our pockets. Now what augmented reality is going to do, and when I started doing this, it was still a debate whether this was going to be a new medium, but it's more and more looking like this is going to be the case where it's going to take all the digital contents and the mediums that came before us, the print, the books, the magazines, the music, the radio, it's going to be taking out of our pockets, and now we're going to be putting that content everywhere, on the top of a table, on a person's face, um, at a physical location, at an object, connected to a mood. <laughs> any, any physical representation around the world, now we're going to start connecting digital contents to it, not just in our pockets. A uh, good way to think about this is a bridge metaphor, and this works. This metaphor works in a couple of different ways. So it connects what's happening as supplementary materials or some extra contents that we find convenient on the internet, and it brings us brings that content and connects it to things that we might find convenient. So, for example, you go to a museum, you see, or an uh, art gallery, you see a beautiful piece of art. Now, when you look at that art or you point a camera or some sort of sensor around that art, it'll tell you who the artist is, maybe get some comments from the artist about what he or she was thinking when they created that art. This works in another way, this metaphor, because um, bridges 
if, work, if they work the best, they get you from point A to B, but the bridge itself is not the conveyance, right? The, the, it's not necessary. It's, it's what the uh, affordance that it gives you. So a lot of this technology has sort of a novelty effect when you first use it. And it's just like going over a big bridge for the first time. You're thinking, oh man, this is a beautiful view. I'm high up in the air. But you're not really thinking about the destination where this is going. And a lot of this is happening with the conveyance of the, the contents that we're delivering with this technology as far as cognitive input and overload and things like that. Uh, that you can dilute the message or the contents you're trying to deliver, especially with first-time users, because they're concentrated on the technology or the vessel itself that's being communicated. So, you know, since there's a, uh, this is supposed to be me, much cooler than me, <laughs> but um, this is part one of the projects that I did, and actually um, I connected some of this stuff to an application I created where you trap digital contents into images, right? And actually, these are playing cards. I have some samples of them right here. You can play poker with these or anything else. But now you can go in with a, an application and you can connect digital contents to them. And it looks kind of like this. So this is spinning on a, on a piece of paper, and, this, and the camera's looking at it, taking in the visual data, uh, mapping it out real time, and it's just putting digital contents on top of it. And this is looking through a webcam on a PC. So you can start to see, like, now, the previous slide, if your student had a specific, that specific uh, application on their phone, they looked at the screen, not only did it display the stuff that I put on it and my PowerPoint slides, that stuff can now be customized and individualized for every student that looks at it. This is a project we did for TEDx Kyoto. We'll probably go into that a little bit later. So, after doing all these case studies, we're starting to try to come down on a couple of different ideas and pr uh, principles involved in it. So really, we're trying to add affordance to digital contents to create better experiences for tourists. It's really the goal. Uh, some marketers will look at this technology and think of it as an ad tech type perspective, and they'll think of it in a way as to pull data from uh, users. ADR is very powerful in that it's always taking information around you <coughs> to augment. To be able to put something on a table or in someone's face, you need to be able to take in a picture or video at all times. <coughs> but um, if you're looking at what we just heard the last um, plenary session from a destination point of view, uh, we're really trying to make the experience of a user more uh, actually better, right? So. Um, we're concerned with the digital contents and how that adds value to where you are physically and who you're dealing with physically. So the, your, your phone, in this case, um, we're moving away from phones and other Internet of Things type devices like Fitbits and all other types of devices that are taking in data for us, taking in all that information and having it put 